Oh, uh, welcome. I would like to introduce you and welcome you to your first course of karate. Uh, specifically, this style of karate that we're about to do is called Kyokushin Karate. Uh, it's founded, founded in the 1960s by founder Masas Oyama. Uh, with, with over currently 10 million subscribers, uh, practitioners all over the world. Uh, before we start, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Shohei Yamamoto. I've been practicing Kyokushin Karate for over 20 years um, under uh, head instructor Shian Taku Nagasaka. Uh, we are the Kyokushin of Los Angeles branch. We have many dojos across Orange County and uh, Los Angeles. Okay, so the very first thing that we would like to cover uh, in our 15 minute course today is uh, the bow. How we bow and pay respects. One of the key differences between Western fighting sports, uh, say such as boxing versus uh, karate, is that karate, we have the uh, Japanese culture ingrained in our uh, daily training. So how we conduct ourselves inside the dojo and outside the dojo um, is uh, tied to the Japanese culture. For example, if you go to a boxing gym, most likely you're just gonna learn the technical aspect, uh, the fighting aspect of boxing within the rule set. For karate, not only will you learn uh, the technical fighting aspect, but you will learn also uh, the meaning of os. Os is the way for you to say yes. Also, it could mean many other things, such as uh, patience, respect, uh, perseverance. Okay. So before we face off and uh, to another person, or uh, before we enter and exit the dojo, we always uh, pay respects in one form or another. One way is to say os. So as you see, the way I did os right now, I made a big cross in, head, uh, in front of me, and as I bow 45 degrees and tilt my body, I uncross and have my hands in front of me, about uh, belt height. The reason why we bow this way to a 45 degree tilt, and not all the way down here, is because first off, we're able to show respect while still being able to see our surroundings. So as you can see, I'm looking uh, slightly above my eyebrows right now so I can see my surroundings. Uh, if you go all the way down here and looking at the floor, sure, you're gonna be still showing respect, but you're not gonna be able to see your surroundings. So back in the days, uh, if you pay respects and you can't see your surroundings, you may be attacked and you won't be able to respond or uh, escape from danger, okay? So once again, I'll show you one more example. Os. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, give this a try uh, together. So I'll go ahead and uh, we'll go three count. Okay? So the very first one is gonna be each. Okay? Os. So let's go two more. Ni. Os. And last one, one more time. Os. Okay. Uh, and also, whenever you enter the dojo, say there is the dojo space is ahead of me, and before I step inside the dojo, it's always the etiquette and courtesy to pay my respects by saying os. Okay? And after the practice is done, when you exit the dojo space, you come to the line, and once again you face towards the dojo, os. Okay. Uh, and I would say probably the most important thing uh, when you do this is whenever you face off with a partner, uh, say you're doing a kumite and you're already about to spar with another person, you don't want to just uh, go and stand and start hitting right away. Before we start, it's etiquette and courtesy to pay respect to one another. Okay, so this is something that's a little bit different from uh, Western martial arts. Uh, sure, I mean, you may, you know, give a nod or whatever, but it's not as formal, I would say, as the way we do it in karate. Os. Okay? So this is a standing way of saying os and paying respect. Now I would like to go over a little bit more formal way of saying uh, os and paying respect is by doing seiza. So this is something that we always do at the very, very beginning of class, before we do warm up or anything like that. Okay, so please follow along. I seize up. You're gonna bring your left leg back and go ahead and kneel. And now move your right leg into this way. 
just like so. Okay, back straight, you're gonna make a fist and go ahead and put it on the top of your thigh. Back straight and slightly tilt your chin and looking forward. Now we always meditate by saying mokso. So when you hear mokso, go ahead and close your eyes and we're gonna briefly meditate. I mokso. Mokso yame. Whenever you hear this, you open your eyes. Okay? When you are doing meditation in Mokso, you want to clear out your mind and forget about everything, anything that's worrying you before you go to class. So that way, you're able to come into class with a fresh mind. Okay? And before you start class, we always lay shinzen ni de. You go over here, you're going to go to the front, put your knuckles on the floor, and slightly tilt, same way. Looking at your surroundings, os, and coming back. Okay, this is a way for you to show respect once again to the dojo and everybody that you're going to be practicing with. Okay, so let's do it one more time. Shinzen ni de, os, and let's come back. So proper way to do seiza, of course, you never want to be slouching. Always keep a back straight. Uh, make a fist. And between your knees, you want to roughly be able to fit about uh, two hands. So make a fist and both of your hands should be, uh, be able to fit between your knees. Once again, if this is too close and too wide is not good enough either because you're not going to be able to uh, properly stand. Okay? So roughly about two fists, go ahead and put it right here between your knees and back straight. And when you come back, we're going to start this as stand up. You're going to be coming off with your right leg first. Uh, the reason behind this is, once again, I said uh, a lot of the karate stuff we do in karate is tied into the Japanese culture. So uh, way back in the day, um, the samurai, during the samurai era, people used to, whenever they train karate, if they have a sword right here, a lot of times it's on their left hip. So. The reason they bring up the right leg is because if they have a sword on the left hip and they withdraw the sword, they're going to cut their own leg right here. So most of the people are right-handed, hence this is why they come from the left hip. Okay, And even though we don't carry swords uh, in our current day, modern day, we still train uh, just like how they did back in the day. Okay, okay so please stand up, uh, right leg first. And come up to your neutral stance. Uh, this neutral stance is called Fudodachi. It just shows um, a way for you to be ready uh, and learn and respond to the class. And this is not necessarily any sort of fighting uh, stance per se. Okay? Uh, fudodachi. Hands, uh, hands right in front of you, belt wise. And also, this is going to be shoulder width, with your toes slightly pointing out. And you're standing straight. Okay. Uh, the first technique that we're going to be doing today is uh, the most basic punch, seiken chudanski. Okay. So everybody, before we go, let's go into our fighting stance. You go left foot forward, and your hands slightly above around your chin area. The reason why you want to have your hands up right here is because you're going to be able to block just in case you get attacked. Right. So right here. From your kumitidachi, we're gonna go seiken chudanski with our front hand, just like so. Okay, and as you punch, you want to make sure you have the other hand right here and not too low. The reason why, for defensive purposes, if you do get kicked right here, you're still gonna be able to block if you have your hands up right here. So, okay, uh, go ahead and give this a couple couple tries. Then uh, we're gonna go ten times together. Okay, go ahead and check your form. Make sure your hands are next to your chin. And you're throwing straight. Okay. The part of uh, your hand which you're hitting is called the seiken, which is the uh, front two knuckles, the first two knuckles when you make a fist. Okay, this is, a, this is called seiken. Okay, and we are hitting the body area, hence this is called chudan. So the name of this technique is seiken chudanski. All right, now let's go ahead and go 10 times. So I'm going to go ahead and count in Japanese. And 
We're gonna punch 10 times, just the front hip. Okay. Ready? H. And come back to your stance. Knee. Some. Chi. Go. Look. H. Punch. Good. Jump. Good. So when you strike, you want to make sure your wrist is straight and not bend this way. All right, so when you make an impact, the point of impact, everything should be straight right here. And of course, you are hitting with the front two knuckles called Seiken. Okay, now we are doing Gyakuzuki, which is same technique, Seiken Shudanzuki, but from the backhand. Okay, I come like that, go ahead and go in your stance. And I'll give you a couple tries that you could do on your own. And as you can see, my other hand is next to my chin, and I'm striking and going straight into the punch. And once again, since you are hitting from the back leg, you want to turn your hip into the punch. That way, not only are you throwing with your upper body, but you're throwing with your whole body by turning your body as you strike. Okay, okay so let's go 10 times. Okay. I come like that. Itch! Come back to your stance. Eh? Knee! Some. Shake! Go! Look! Itch! Hutch! Hip! Jew! I know it! Go ahead and come back to your fudolachi, your neutral stance. Okay, so that was the first uh, technique that we learned today called Seiken Chudanski. And as you can see, um, the core principle is the same as when you do a bow a day and whenever you punch. Okay, number one is gonna be your posture. If your posture is broken uh, in karate and you're already punching right here, your punch is not gonna be as effective. And also, it translates to whenever you go to the blocking technique. Now, if you have bow posture, your blocking technique is going to be least effective as well. So, number one, keep a good posture. And you want to imagine when you are standing in even in Fudolachi, there is a force on the top of your head going up to the ceiling and something also going down between your legs from your belly button area and going straight down. This is going to force your body to go straight. And this is one of the ideas that you want to keep in mind when you are training karate. And we call this Tenshijin. Okay, now the class is coming to the end. Let's go ahead and close up the class with our Seiza. Okay, I Seiza up, move your left leg down, and go ahead and kneel. And once again, make a fist, and back straight, and chin slightly tucked. Now we're going to meditate using Mokso. Mokso, go ahead and close your eyes. Clear your mind from anything and everything. Mokso, yame, go ahead and open up your eyes. Okay, this will be the end of the class. We always pay respect at the end. All right, sensei, lip. This is for the instructor and also to everybody around you. Senpai otagai ne. Os. Please stand up. Okay, now you're gonna go right, right up and come back to your neutral stance. Os. Okay, well this is gonna be your 15 minute course for today of Kyokushin Karate. Uh, thank you for joining very much. And each single class we're gonna cover maybe one or two subjects uh, for the next class, we're going to go something a little bit different and we're going to add on for each class. Okay? Thank you very much for joining. Oops.